Thank you to Fabric Mart for gifting me the fabric for this project. So, there comes a time in like every YouTuber's career where they see this trend rolling in and they go, I'm hopping on that one. And that, that's what I did. So I've actually been planning this historical bell for like months and months and months and months before I found out that everyone else was doing historically inspired Disney. And when I saw that they were all doing it, I just, I ordered the fabric because what else are you gonna do at that point? I mean, really? And you know, you're only part of the cool kids club if you like actually dress up and be part of the cool kids club, right? That's what I like to think. Opinions may vary. Okay, so let's talk about the inspiration of this bell ball gown because I feel like I need some explanation. I don't know why I thought that this project had to be in the Rococo mid to late 1700s time period. It just, it wasn't going to be anything else. So I just ran with it. Sometimes your products tell you what they're going to be, and sometimes you get to tell them. This this project told me. This also had its pros and cons, because I knew that I wasn't going to build all of the, like, foundation garments to make, like, a real garment. So I decided to go the history bounding route, which brought up another point, because, like, Rococo and Vidi... Rococo and Victorian fashion put into a history bounding sense is already a fully fledged form of fashion called Lolita. So like what do I call this? History bounding bell? Lolita bell? Historically adequate bell? Like I don't know what, what are we calling this? The bell project? Anyway you're not here to listen to me rant you're here to watch me so a costume. So let's get to it. I starting with a princess themed pattern. I definitely wanted to get the accurate look of like the robe elegance. I'm I'm not gonna try to pronounce these names. I knew that I wanted the look but I didn't want to make like the robe and the stomacher and like all the different pieces. So this was the best middle ground that I could come up with. I also didn't want to try to figure out any sort of front closure like these dresses typically have. We're putting a zipper in. We're going history bounding. I'm putting in a zipper. Each piece will also be flatlined with some white organza fabric from my stash. You will see this multiple times throughout the project. I think I used just about as much of the white organza as I did the yellow satin. No, I use more yellow satin because of the overskirt. I also took this time to cut out the decoration that I wanted on the stomacher because we're just cutting everything at once. We're like batch working this project. It's it's a theme. You'll see it. To make the decoration, I first pressed it in half and then I pressed up the raw edges in to like semi finish them, but it didn't really finish them. So they kind of frayed and I have little strings everywhere, but it's okay. It's fine. It's fine. I just, I trimmed them. Can't see them. They'll probably die in the wash, but who cares, right? It's, it's just a dress. Not something that I spent a long time on. Lots of, lots of mental energy on to figure out this thing or anything. Yeah, nothing like that. So my current thought process is to do all of these strips, I guess, and then turn them into bows. Um, I'll obviously put like a pretty finish there. Um, and then the lighter color will peek through, which will be great because then the under part of the skirt will be the same layered technique. So it'll all match and flow nicely. I just... I'm not a big bow person. I'm wondering if I would know because there's gonna be ruffles framing it so I need to do something more a little bit more simple here. This also does with the um, nice finish here give me the opportunity to attach like mini roses so I will get some of those when we get closer to like end time and figure out if I actually like that. So that's that's my thought right now. I also finished the top edge of the stomacher with itty bitty whip stitches, which you can totally see on the other side, but like, if you're that close to me that you can see those stitches, back off. I need my space. You're, you're too close, friend. Too close. I also sewed the bodice together at this point, which I don't have any footage of because apparently I got really excited and just didn't even bother to set up my camera. Because that happens. 
happened a lot during this project. Just enjoy? The next step was to cut out the skirts and I started with the underskirt. I kept going back and forth between whether I wanted it to be a half skirt or a three quarter skirt. I knew a full circle would be too full but I was worried that a half would be too slim. So three quarter was a happy middle. Looking back now that I've like finished the project I think I would have been okay with a half and probably preferred that fullness, but it's okay. I just paid attention to the overskirt when I took the pictures and everything turned out so pretty. You'll see those in a minute. Or 10. I wanted the underskirt to match the stomacher, so I also cut out a layer of the white organza. After everything had been cut out, it was time to run it all through the serger. So that way all the edges are nice and finished and they don't die spontaneously because they unraveled and became unusable. Fabric does that. Finish your edges. Once all the serging was done, it was time to sew the skirt together. And it looked pretty good at this point. Still not perfect or finished, but it looked pretty good. And it's really pretty. This, this underskirt in its final form, which you're not seeing now, might might make it into my everyday wardrobe. Actually, it probably will if I'm if I'm being honest. The overskirt ended up being four panels of 60 inches wide, so that's you can do the math. That's a lot of overskirt. Don't regret it though. I love, you know me, love big full skirts. Love them. They're my favorite. But in order to gather that much, you kind of need to use like alternative methods to like the two rows of gathering stitches, especially when your machine has tension issues and you don't always get to gather that nicely. That's why I use the zigzag and string method. It hasn't failed me yet. Highly recommend you try it. After the overskirt is gathered, it is getting sewn to the bodice. The underskirt is going to get finished separately, like I said before, kind of want that in my everyday wardrobe, so I just made that a thing. I was also worried about having too much bulk on the hips with attaching the underskirt to the actual dress as well, mostly because, yeah, I was just I was really worried about that bulk along the hips. So I'm on the fence because I really like this rose detail, but I don't know if it needs more, like a bow. But I'm worried that the bow would be too much, but the rose is too simple, but I also have yet to put all of the trimming detail not only on the bodice, but also on the skirts. So what I'm thinking is the goal for today is to get all the trimming done so I can decide bows or no bows. It was at this point that I started on the trim, which according to the math was like over 800 inches long, which then reduced to like 140 inches. It basically meant that I spent an hour like hunched over my sewing machine guesstimating the length of ruffles. It hurt. I hated it. The ruffles were worth it though. Not gonna lie. Ah! This has me thinking that I need to do bows because it just needs more. And then I'm also wondering like do I need a white ruffle underneath here to like make it pop more? Cause it would be like a true white because it'd be folded up on itself instead of like this creamy color that that turned. <sighs> what this basically boils down to is I have design decisions to make and I currently do not have the brain power or the willingness, let's face it, it's mostly the willingness, to make these design decisions. So I am going to spend the rest of my working hours today that's a lie. I'm going to spend the rest of my sewing hours today putting on the sleeves. Then I'll have no choice but to actually finish everything. Because there will be nothing else to procrastinate. But I'm really hoping I can get this dress done this week. It is Tuesday. Um, yeah. Man, there's really not a lot of work left unless I choose to complicate it. So, do you remember when I said I don't tend to struggle with sleeves like a lot of other costumers do? I swear that comment is going to come back and like haunt me for the rest of my days. I never struggled so much setting in sleeves as I did with this project. Usually it just goes in and is perfect and it fits and you don't 
get a weird crease here and it doesn't super tight here, but I don't tend to struggle with sleeves. These sleeves, man, I went through four or five iterations. Ended up finding one that was slightly too big, but I didn't want to gather it in because that doesn't seem accurate to the time period. So I added a little, I pieced the shoulders together. It's hidden by trim, you can't see it, unless I point it out or you're like analyzing my work, which why are you doing that? This is a hobby, not a competition. <sighs> Struggle with sleeves? Anyway, well, back to point, what were we talking about? I pieced in a piece on the shoulder to get the sleeves to fit. And they were good sleeves, I think. So once I had all of that mess figured out, I attached the flounce, which was basically a circle of the yellow and then a gathered rectangle of the white organza. I thought that I might want to put more layers of white in. I might go back and do that later before I like wear this to an event or out for another round of pictures when there's actually roses in the rose garden. Point, 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 point. If I were to do the floofs again, I think I would offset the inner circle of the yellow one so that way it was like shorter on the inside and longer on the outside. I just think that would drape better. Could just be me. Could be how they did it in period and I just don't know because I did minimal research for this. <laughs> minimal! We're history bounding. We're just here for the look. Okay, so here's the thing. I figured out all the trim on Belle. And I think if I really pushed, I think I could finish her Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Wednesday, which is two days away? I don't know how to count days. Long story short, I think I can finish Belle within the next two days. And that's exciting. Um, right now I need to take all the trim off and do all the finishing work that I've been putting off. And then I can literally just like pin everything back on and then run everything through my machine. <sighs> Either this is going to kill me or it's gonna be great. I'm, I'm going for the former, not the latter, unfortunately. But that's where I'm at. Let's get working. It's always kind of sad when you have to undo all the pinning that you just did to give yourself an idea of what the project actually looks like because you need that visual cue to keep you motivated. I guess in that case that's a necessary step, but it's still not something I like to do. It's like unprettying the pretty. I would say like taking your makeup off at the end of the day, but like you're beautiful without makeup, so I mean. Not a fair comparison. Oh, come on, focus. Focus. All right, so this is as far as we got today. All the finishing work on the overdress is done. I still need to even out and hem the underskirt, but that's a different matter. <laughs> like, this sun is terrible, I'm sorry, guys. Um, but yeah, hopefully tomorrow, I will get the hem on the underskirt done. It looks like it needs to be brought up a couple inches. Um, and then, like you can see, I lift my arm and that goes. So I'll have to get skirt hook, not skirt hooks. I'll have to put hooks and bars, probably thread bars, so that way I can wear the skirt by itself if I want. And probably just do one on either side, and then two in the back. Maybe at the sides and the back. That seems like the better option, and then I can just do white thread bars. Anyway, this is the outfit as it is thus far. I am really excited about this. And I'm out of bobbin, so as I wind a bobbin, enjoy this quick ad break. Welcome back. We are having a circle with an eight inch hem that's going to end up being so ripply and terrible but do we care no we don't care because 90 percent of this hem is going to be covered by the overskirt and the other 10 percent is going to be covered by a ruffle this also means that i like spent another hour making the ruffle to go on this underskirt but i had marika in her video about making her 1920s late 1920s bell to keep me company. Highly recommend. Go go watch Marika's video.
I interrupt this regularly scheduled content to give you a picture of this underskirt. This is going in my everyday wardrobe. I have one goal for today, and that is to finish this bell dress. I am utterly exhausted. I literally just want to lay in bed, but we're getting this done. It's gonna be great. I'm gonna drink more caffeine than normal. We're gonna go in a hyper-focused state. It'll be great. We'll get it done. Look at this. So I think I'm gonna go with this side of the trim instead of this one, even though this is what I originally planned. This side gives me more of a historical feel, and I want this to feel more historical than costumey, and this side is definitely more costumey. So I'm going to still put all the roses in the stomacher because I feel like that will just make it look really nice. So all of that trimmed down. It just means that there's not going to be any roses on the skirt, probably, most likely. So not the end of the world. As I sew down the trim, I'm also going to be adding this little red ribbon. So there is going to be more red on the garment. It's just not going to be like, bam, roses everywhere because I feel like that would look tacky. This could just totally be my own opinion though, um, but it's also my dress, so I do what I want. The trim was easy to put on. It really was just a lot of measuring and pinning and sewing and making sure that you couched on the ribbon as you sewed and then more measuring and pinning and sewing. But hey, I got the job done. But it also wiped me out, so I took a break and multiple naps, and then came back and sewed on the roses, which is why the light is absolutely terrible. But hey, the dress is done! Overall, I am really happy with how the dress fits and moves and looks, and it's just really nice to just see everything come together and to see this vision and this idea that has been mulling around in my head to just come to life and it came to life in such a spectacular way too like i don't think the vision in my head is what the reality is because the reality is better you I know mean, it was only a half-baked idea so it could only have gotten better from there i will also say that the pictures i got of myself in this dress look like they came out of a fairy tale and i can't be happier i can't stop looking at these pictures because they are absolutely gorgeous so, you know, like, if you want to keep looking at them with me, go over to Instagram. They're, they're there. We can stare at them together. Okay, that makes me sound vain. So, uh, maybe not? If you would like to further support my channel, I have a link to my little pattern business down below, as well as to my Patreon. More than welcome to help me fund future adventures like this. If not, thank you for watching the video! That helps too, and I will see you guys on Monday for a new video and live on Thursday. Bye friends!